In this video, I'll let you know how to transfer the data between the server and the client using the JSON syntax, okay? So basically, this video will be about making a project of controlling appliances connected to the ESP board uh, through a web browser or a web client and the data transferred will be in the JSON syntax. So let's get started. If you are new to my channel, let me tell you that I'm currently running a series of making our own local area network based home automation system from scratch uh, using our ESP32 or the Node MCU board. And during this journey, we'll be learning about web server, web socket server, JavaScript, HTML, JSON and stuff like that. Okay. So if you're interested in making your own local area network based home automation system, or maybe if you're interested in any of the topic which I discussed uh, just now, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out any of the episodes. So that being said, let us start with the fourth episode of the series, okay? So this was the code which we have written in the third episode, uh, which was about uh, establishing a WebSocket server on the ESP board. But as I said in that video, uh, JSON is a standard format for exchanging data between the server and the client. And this, this and in this video, we'll be using JSON only. So learning about JSON and how to use it with our Arduino ID and the ESP board, okay? So let us start with uh, learning about JSON. So if we go to that same website using which we have learned everything so far, okay? So that website is nothing but uh, w3schools.com. This is an amazing website for learning like javascript css python and html and stuff like that okay so let's start with the json okay okay so the full form of json is javascript object notation okay json is a syntax for storing and exchanging data as, as, as i said earlier it is a standard uh, method for sending and receiving the data between the client and the server okay json is text written with javascript object notation uh, basically json is a part of javascript as its name says it is just an object notation format inside JavaScript, hence the name JavaScript object notation arrived, okay? Uh, let us read more about JavaScript, okay? So JavaScript is uh, a lightweight data interchange format. It is obviously a lightweight data ex interchange or exchange method because this method uh, doesn't require any other extra data or any extra uh, line of code for sending the data. It is really lightweight uh, uh, method for sending or exchanging the data. Second uh, thing, it is self-describing and easy to understand. Self-describing means by just looking at the JSON syntax, you'll come to know that what data we are actually transfer transferring to the server or maybe client, okay? So, so that syntax itself describes everything, okay? So we don't need any extra, uh, like we don't need extra skills or any extra uh, knowledge for understanding that data. It is self-describing, easy to understand. By just looking at it, you'll understand everything, okay? So it is language independent. So this is the most amazing thing. Like we can use JSON with any programming language. Maybe it's Python, C, C++, maybe it's Arduino, Java, obviously JavaScript, okay? So like we can use it in any programming language. Now, why we can use it in any programming language? It's just because JSON format is text only format and we can use text in any of the programming language, okay? So this is the beauty of JSON. It is lightweight, it is easy to understand, and self-describing and it is language independent so these all features makes it a standard method a standard syntax for stand you know exchanging the data between the server and the client okay so with that basic introduction let us see uh, what's the syntax of a json based data okay so if we go inside this syntax uh, menu um, here are some of the syntax rules. let's just read it one by one so data in json format is in name value pairs okay so here is the data formatted with json so as you can see the data will be always in pair and then pair contains name and the value okay so here the name is name and the value is john okay so uh, this line says it is a name value pair second line said it is the data is separated by commas so if we need to send multiple data the data will be separated by commas as you can see here okay and third rule says curly braces hold objects okay so the json formatted data is within the curly braces and the last the last rule says square brackets holds the array so i don't think there's an example for array here but yeah the array is defined inside the square brackets okay so these were basic syntax rules okay but things will get much more clear and the knowledge will get much more powerful and strong as soon as we start implementing json in a practical project okay so just sit back and enjoy this journey <laughs> So the long story short, this is a JSON formatted data. So it start with the curly braces. Then in the double inverted comma, we, we write the name. Then using the colon, we assign the value to that name and everything is written inside the double inverted comma, okay? And one more thing, if you're sending the number in the JSON formatted data, you don't need to add the double inverted comma. But if you're sending a string, then you need to add the double inverted comma, okay? So this is a basic uh, JSON formatted data. Uh, let's just start implementing this inside our ESP based code, okay? So here is the code for our project. So what I will do, I first of all copy this HTML page. 
I'll copy it and I'll paste it inside the text editor. So currently I'm using this sublime text editor. So I'll just paste that code here. Okay, cool. So yeah, this is the HTML document which we have written in the last episode. Okay. So what we are doing is uh, as soon as the on button under LD1 section is pressed, we were just calling this button one on function. And inside that button one on function, we were just sending the string as LD1 is on using the connection.send function. Okay. So earlier we were sending a plain string, but now we'll be sending the data formatted with JSON. Okay. So for that, what I will do, I'll first uh, uh, write a variable here and name the variable as a button underscore one underscore status. Okay. So initially I'll assign the value as zero. So this variable will be containing the status of the button one, whether it is on or off. Okay. So by default, we are assigned the value zero. That means off. Okay. So after that, uh, we'll go inside this button one underscore on function. Okay. So and as soon as the button one on function is called will assign the value one to this variable okay so what i will do i'll just write that variable button one status and i'll assign the value one okay after that what i will do i'll just remove this connection dot send function we are not at all sending any string but rather we'll be calling one function uh, called send underscore data okay so we haven't declared or created this function yet uh, i will create a new function here so function and send underscore data okay so what we'll do inside this function, we'll just send the data formatted with JSON to the server. Okay. For that, we'll create one variable and we'll name the variable as a full data. Okay. So inside this variable, I'll be writing the data formatted with JSON. For that, I'll open the curly braces. Okay. So for the first object, I will give the name as LED one. So within the double inverted comma, I will write LED one. Okay. Uh, write the double inverted comma again. Okay. So now the LED one value is stored inside the button one status. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll simply copy this and uh, here I will write as uh, plus button one status, then plus, then again, a uh, inverted comma. And I will close this uh, JSON formatted syntax with the curly braces and I will attach a semicolon here. Okay. So this much line of code uh, will create a JSON formatted data and that data will be stored inside the full data variable. Now what we'll do, we'll just send this full data uh, variable, okay, using the connection.send function to the connected uh, server, okay. So how the things are going is, uh, whenever the on button under the LD1 is pressed, this function will be called, okay. So inside this function, the value one will be assigned to this button one status variable. Inside the console, we'll be able to see LED one is on. After that, we are calling the send data function. Inside the send data function, we are just sending the full data formatted with JSON to the server. Okay, things are pretty clear till now, I think, okay. So similarly, we will write this much code for the off button as well, okay. So what I'll do, I'll simply clear this uh, connection.send function. I will attach here as button one status and I'll assign the value as zero, okay, because it is off button. So off means zero, okay. After that, we will be calling that same function called send data. Cool. So if the button one on is pressed, we'll sending the data one. If button one off is pressed, we'll be sending the data zero, okay. So let's just keep the code uh, as it is. Copy this much amount of HTML document, paste it inside the ESP code. And let us upload this much line of code inside the ESP base board. And let's see what response we are getting inside the serial monitor. Okay. So, okay. So the code is successfully uploaded. Let us open the serial monitor. Let me just reset this uh, ESP board. Okay. So MDNS responder started. Make sure your uh, system is connected with the access point uh, created by your ESP board. Okay. Cool. I'll open the web browser. Okay. I'll go to the page ESP.local. Great. I'll open this uh, console. Okay, so console is already open. Okay, so let's see what happens when we click the on button under the LED one section. So on, okay, so on the console, it says LED one on, which is uh, same as uh, before, but inside the serial monitor, as you can see, we got the data formatted with JSON syntax. Okay, as you can see, the LED one is the name and one is the value assigned to the LED one name. And this data is formatted with JSON. Okay, so yeah, we were able to send the data to the ESP board using the JSON format. Now what we need to do, we need to write some code inside the ESP server to, you know, read out the JSON formatted data and to turn on and off the LED. Okay. So let's see how things work in the ESP code. So for that, we have a dedicated library called Arduino JSON, which you can download by going into sketch, into include libraries, into manage libraries. Here just type Arduino JSON. Okay. So here you need to install this Arduino JSON library. Okay. I will close it. After downloading and installing the library, what you have to do is you have to include that library here. So hash include. So Arduino JSON dot H. Cool. Okay. 
So after that, uh, we will create one uh, JSON object here as soon as we receive the data, okay? So here we are receiving the data and storing inside this string message, okay? So first of all, I will remove all this line of code. There's no need of that, okay? So here you have to write this much line of code for, you know, deserializing that JSON formatted data, okay? So what this much line of code says, so first of all, we have created one object called doc and we are deserializing JSON using the deserialize JSON function and saving all the JSON based data inside the doc variable or doc object we have just created, okay? After that, we are checking for the error. If there is any error with the JSON formatted data, then it will show error inside this function. And if there is no error, this if condition will not be satisfied and our code will jump off this if condition, okay? Uh, now what we can do is we can get the JSON based data uh, by using the this doc object. How we can do, I will let you know. So first of all, we'll create one integer in which we'll be saving the status of LED1, okay? So I'll create one integer variable called LED1 status, okay? So, ld1 is equal to first of all i will write doc inside the square bracket inside the double inverted comma here you have to write the name of that json object whose value you want to fetch okay so as you can see the name of the json object is led1 okay so i'll simply write here as led1 close the double inverted comma close the square bracket and semicolon okay so what this much line of code will do it will fetch the data of this JSON object, which is one, and the one, and this one, this data will be saved inside the LD1 status variable. Okay, so now we can easily turn on and off the LED using this variable. Okay, so let us write the code for that. I will write as digital write LED1 comma LED1 status. Okay, okay, cool. I think this much line of code is pretty easy to understand. We have just uh, defined a JSON document. We have deserialized the JSON data stored in the uh, this doc object. After that, we have fetched the value of our JSON object LED1 and saved inside the LED1 status. And after that, we are just turning on and off the LED according to the data received. Cool, right? <laughs> Let's just upload this much line of code and see this project in action, okay? So I'll just click on this upload button. So till the code gets uploaded, let me tell you that if you're enjoying this series, if you're learning something new, do press the like button because if you press the like button, it will not only motivate me, but the YouTube algorithm will also share this video with other viewers thinking that this video is worth watching, okay? So do like the video, it, it really matters, okay? Okay, so the code is successfully uploaded. Let's just open the serial monitor. Okay, so MDNS is to start. Let me just open the web browser, okay? So make sure your system is connected with the access point created by the ESP board, okay? Uh, let me just refresh this page. Okay, cool. So everything is working perfectly. So according to the code written, as soon as I click on the on button, the LED on the ESP board should get turned on, okay? Let's just see this in action. Uh, let's just press this on button. Okay, so the green LED on the ESP board is turned on and as you can see, the for JSON formatted data is received as we expect, as expected. And as soon as I click on the off button, the LED uh, should get turned off, okay? Let us see. Okay, so I'm able to control the LED easily through WebSocket, through JSON formatted data flawlessly in real time, okay? So yeah, we are successfully able to exchange the data with the JSON format. Cool, right? So now we are left with sending the data for the LED2 as well, okay? Uh, this is a bit different as compared to LED1, so let me show you how it is a bit different, okay? So let us go to the HTML document which we have created. So here in the on-click event under the LED2 section, what I will do, I'll simply call the function called uh, button underscore two underscore on okay and as soon as the off button under led2 section is pressed i'll call the function as button underscore two underscore off okay cool so now we'll define both the functions here so i'll simply copy this two functions and uh, paste it here i'll just rename button one to button two okay and button one status to button two status led one to led two then button two again two two okay great now here we will create one more variable i'll copy this and create one more variable as button two status which will store the status of the button under led2 section okay uh, after that uh, as you can see uh, as soon as the button on is pressed under led2 the status will be one and off is pressed the status will be zero okay so after that we are calling the send data function so after every click we are calling the send data function okay so inside the send data function what we can do here is so now what we'll do, we'll be sending the two object formatted with JSON. And as we have already learned in the JSON syntax rule that data is separated by commas. Okay, so if we are writing one more data on creating one more, uh, you know, name value pair, we, we, we should separate it with comma. Okay, so let's just separate it with comma. So what I will do, I'll simply uh, uh, remove this curly braces for now. I'll type comma 
after that i'll create one more uh, i'll write the one more name as led2 uh, close the double inverted comma write the colon okay then i'll close this uh, inverted comma type as plus uh, write the button to status variable here type plus then open the inverted comma then i will close that curly brace and again close that inverted comma okay so this much line of code will be able to send the json formatted data with two name value pairs okay and we'll be just sending that full data as we were sending before okay there's no much change here okay so this was all about the html document i will simply copy this document and i will just paste that document here inside the esp based code okay i just paste it here okay cool so here what we have to do we have to fetch the data of led2 object as well so what i'll do is simply copy this and paste this just below it i'll change the name of this variable as led2 status and inside the doc i will change the name as led2 okay so here led2 status will contain the value of led2 name okay great so what i will do here is i will just copy this much line of code and i will just turn on and off the led2 according to the status received from the client side okay so i think this much line of code will work perfectly for controlling two leds using a web socket server using a json format okay let's just upload this code directly to the esp board and let's just see everything in action so till the code is uploaded let me tell you that if you love my videos and if you want to support me then hey i'm also on patreon so you can go on to patreon.com slash techie sms and you can support me there and well you will also get some benefits of supporting me so head on to that patreon page and do support if you feel like okay Okay, so the code is successfully uploaded. Let us open the serial monitor. Uh, let us just reset this ESP board. Okay, so MDNS respond has started. Let me open the web browser. Make sure your computer is connected with that ESP access point. Okay, let us refresh this page. So now according to the code, I should be able to control the LEDs connected to the ESP board using these buttons. Okay, let us try it out. <coughs> okay. So as you can see, I'm able to control the LED one as before. But uh, if you look at the data side, the data is bit changed. Earlier we were getting only this much data, but now we are also able to get the LED two data as well. Okay, let's just try toggling the LED two buttons. Okay, so as you can see, the LED two is also turning on and off according to the button pressed on the client side. Okay, let's just turn on both the LEDs. Cool. Okay. So our project is perfectly working as expected. So yeah, this is how you can transfer the data between the server and the client using the JSON format. So if you have watched all the four episodes, now you can control your home appliances using the web browser on your smartphone or maybe on your laptop, okay? You just need to connect relays with the ESP board, connect the appliances to the relay and control them using the web browser, okay? So do make the project and do share the project videos with me on my WhatsApp number or maybe you can share it in my Instagram. The details are mentioned in the description of this video. So yeah, this was all about the video. Now in the next video, I will let you know how to transfer the census data from the server to the client side, okay? So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss out that episode. So yeah, this was it. Now just wait for my next video and then explore, learn, share with me, Techie SMS.